All right, good morning. I got a few minutes to burn here before my next thing. So I'm gonna take this time and share with you guys what some of my loadout looks like here in my truck. More specifically, what's up here in the front seat. So what's accessible to me while I am operating my vehicle. I'll do another video that shows the entire truck. You know, I got other equipment, other tools that I keep in the back seat, and then I got other stuff that I keep in the bed of the truck. That'll be a little bit more in depth. But for here, real quick, just what I have up here in the front seat with me accessible. Most of this stuff stays in my truck, um, some of which transfers to my body uh, when I leave the vehicle, depending on where I am and what I'm doing. I'll kind of talk through that here briefly. Uh, just to give you an idea what this loadout looks like. So flip this guy around right here. Actually, you can just see what I was just listening to. A little Andrew Huberman Lab. Awesome podcast. Amazing dude. Uh, so here at Center Console, right? At first, I hated the fact that this vehicle had this just massive bucket of space here in the center. I thought it was a really horribly... Uh, designed setup because it's just this it's just a bucket right it's just this bucket um, I thought they could have done a better job with how they organized this but I've obviously found a, a pretty convenient way to kind of utilize it so moving through some of the equipment uh, this is probably jumping out at people as firearms tend to do so this is my Glock 43 which is my everyday carry pistol Right now, I have this just in a basic, simple Falco appendix holster, okay? This is not the greatest resource or tool to give you the fastest draw or the greatest retention. Um, it's just really convenient. So I can, I can slip this in and out real fast, uh, depending on getting it out of my vehicle. I have multiple holsters that I have and use for different circumstances, different situations. This is just kind of my more basic setup. Um, and you can just see the Glock 43 itself. If it focuses, there you go. Uh, this thing comes stock with a six round magazine. I'll show you closer here in a second. But with this extension that's put on there, it gives you an extra two rounds. Plus it obviously extends the length of the pistol grip. So, you know, I'm 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six. I got relatively big hands. Yeah, it's, a, it's still a tight squeeze for my fingers. It's not ideal, um, but I can certainly get enough of a grip on here to effectively employ this weapon system, right? So different tools for different jobs. I'm obviously sacrificing quite a bit um, in terms of the use of the weapon itself for... Uh, ease of carry and to maintain a very low print and and uh, and just a more comfortable concealed carry configuration uh, right here I got my sock P dagger this is actually just velcro to the inside of this thing phenomenal tool I have one of these on my kit uh, for work and uh, it's just become kind of a staple uh, obviously I can take this off I can detach it I can attach it to my body if I need to, actually, if I want to carry a fixed blade weapon for any particular reason. A backup cell phone, all right? This thing just stays hooked up onto this charger pretty much all the time, all right? For me, this is pretty easy in terms of an investment because this is my work phone. So I'm issued this iPhone for work purposes. Um, obviously, I can use it for any emergency situation but I think just having a backup, dedicated, fully charged cell phone option in your vehicle is just a sound way to go. Yeah, you can always plug in your, your regular phone, your day-to-day -day phone to get it back charged up. But there are obviously situations in which your battery is almost dead and all of a sudden your vehicle is de it goes dead. Uh, your vehicle can no longer charge it. Emergency type situation, you have another backup phone that you're able to use if you need to. Uh, I got a tourniquet right here. I also have another tourniquet. You probably can't see it over there in the doorway. Uh, one of the primary pieces of medical equipment. 
Next to this, I got just another basic uh, folding blade. Here I got some def uh, defense spray. It's a great option. It's obviously really small. It's really easy to conceal. Obviously, this is a non-lethal tool to use, but depending on the venue I may be going in, uh, it's just an option that I have. Uh, what else do I got going on in here? Oh, this is just some grip training tool. I have a bunch of these. This is really just for literally while I'm driving or more specifically if I'm stuck in traffic and I just want to lose my mind on somebody over something silly, I can pick this guy up and just get in some uh, grip training. Uh, it's kind of it for the center console. Moving down here, this, this thing with the red handle, this is a, a safety hammer or a vehicle escape tool. Uh, this is used to break glass in the case of emergency. You could obviously use this as well to, as like a crowbar to pry yourself out or into something. Uh, it's got this, this, this bladed edge right here in the middle that's designed to cut a seat belt. So just imagine you're trapped in your vehicle following a vehicle accident. You're, uh, you obviously need to get out. You can use this tool to um, assist you in doing that. The key with something like this, uh, as well as say a pistol, is to just have it readily accessible. You know, if you're in a vehicle accident and you have this thing, even just in the back seat or even in the center console right here, right? Just that additional layer of movement to get to the tool when you are under extreme stress or you're disoriented, uh, could that could very easily make this an irrelevant piece of equipment, right? So making sure something like this, similar again to a pistol, is readily available when things are chaotic and you're not thinking thoroughly um, and or you have physical barriers that are in between you and the piece of equipment that you really need. Uh, what else I got? Hanging around my, my shifting... Where is it? There it is. Uh, this is just a, a headlamp here. And then I've got some... It's kind of survival bracelet thing. You know, these are pretty these are pretty common and pretty popular in the tactical world. It's got a compass, it's got a bunch of other little cool guy, little James Bond little tools in there, but mostly for me this is just to have some cordage, right? Cordage, which you can use for all kinds of different shit. Uh, if I can get my leg out of the way, you see down here, uh, this is just an emergency fire extinguisher. This thing is not going to be used to put out any kind of raging inferno, all right? You mean, this is used to put out, like, small, basic, think, like, household fires. Uh, but it is an option if you're dealing with, you know, some flames that are moving towards a vehicle, perhaps. If you're in there in a recovery situation or a small fire breaks out inside your vehicle, you've got a tool to use. But you definitely do not want to grab this thing if you show up on scene to an accident and there's a there's a truck that's engulfed in flames. This thing is is not going to do really much good for you. But um, it's it's something you can use to deal with some small fires. Uh, what else do I got over here? Baby wipes and diapers. Yep. I have a 17-month-old going on 18 months here in a little bit. So essential equipment right there. Next to that, some hand sanitizer because, you know, COVID. Um, in the door here, I just got a Gerba multi-tool. And then I got my extra magazine for my Glock 43. And you can see here, we talked about the rounds, right? So you get six rounds from this thing stock plus the two from the extension gives you eight. Uh, again, it's personal protection weapon. This is not a tool used to walk into a known gunfight. I would probably uh, equip myself with something different if that was the situation. And uh, that's kind of it. You know, again, I got some more stuff behind me. Uh, you can see maybe just on my headrest right here. This is a med kit that's uh, strapped to my headrest it just sits right behind me so uh, I do have access to that from where I'm sitting now it's just attached to this 
uh, strap via some Velcro so I could just reach over my head and I could pull that med kit out if I if I needed it from the driver's seat. In, in all reality, chances are that would be something that I would I would use as a secondary option for more of a sustainment medical situation, right? When you're thinking immediate onset, like holy shit, I need something now, odds are that's gonna be your tourniquets, which is why I have those readily accessible. I'll do a greater uh, or, or a video that's got more in depth uh, detail with the rest of the loadout I have in my vehicle. But just to give you guys an idea of what I have up here in the front seat in terms of tools, uh, those of you that do not follow Mike Glover uh, with Fieldcraft Survival, uh, you're missing out. That point blank, you're missing out. He is my go-to uh, in terms of my preparedness and gaps that I have within that realm. Uh, Mike is a is a former Green Beret, and then he did a whole bunch of stuff uh, in the contracting space and some other stuff. He's got a wide range of experience, and he's really dedicated his professional life uh, since then to uh, preparedness and survivability. So if you're not following Mike Glover and Fieldcraft Survival, uh, you're doing yourself a disservice. It's actually kind of embarrassing. I'll, I'll admit this to you guys. I've been a Green Beret now uh, for just past 15 years and uh, obviously been through quite a bit of training and a lot of different situations in the States and abroad. And the amount of gaps that I still have to this day uh, that I've learned through Mike and through Fieldcraft uh, is actually embarrassing to a degree. Like, man, I really should have already been tracking on this stuff and really already have been prioritizing this stuff. So point being is we are never ever at a place where we know it all. It's important to surround ourselves with people that are better than us and that we can learn from. And Mike and Fieldcraft are certainly uh, those, an entity and a person that fall within that sphere that I continue to leverage every single day. Time to go to work. See you guys later.